much. <clears throat> Good afternoon, everybody. Um, I, I want to talk as a librarian that we, you know, relate with researchers from different disciplines. And um, I'm also a doctoral student currently at the University of Wisconsin in Milwaukee. So um, just a disclaimer, first and foremost, uh, that this presentation is not um, an act against uh, the development in technology. Rather, it's just to strike a balance on the use of technology to different aspects of human endeavor. And specifically, uh, one of the main areas in my presentation has to do with uh, scholarly uh, information retriever, which is actually a major event in research, right from the introduction to conclusion and recommendations. So the act of scholarly communication is a recurrent uh, thing. And uh, it's just a way of looking for what has been done, how it connects with what we are doing, and the point of divergence. So, uh, but with the development in open AI, we've seen the introduction of different stuffs, and the major focus in today's uh, presentation that I'm making has to do with chat GPT. And um, I think the presentation by the, um, the keynote speaker this morning kind of established some of the things I had in mind as a professional, as a researcher that, uh, that listened to questions from people, from researchers, because I have listened to people that say, hey, literature review is kind of difficult, where you have to search, 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 and search. And uh, with the coming of the open AI, specifically chat GPT, we've seen that it is used for different purposes. And uh, for poems, for generating codes, and all kinds of things. Then, when it comes to scholarly communication, then we see another dimension to it because, there are, because it's a scientific process. And there are basic things that uh, uh, review process demands that uh, people pay attention to. And that's kind of what the presentation is all about and I will be moving faster from now. So again, it's not a disclaimer against technology, but just to strike a balance. And some of the things I was going to talk about, I already have them here. And um, talking about scholarly communication, which I really want to just lay an emphasis here, because it involves a lot of things, because you are comparing mind, trying to establish your own area of study as an authority, and that you want to really contribute to the body of knowledge. So it really involves a lot of reading, studying, scanning, downloading. And in doing all this, you make some comparative analysis. And that's why you say, A, author A agreed with this, whereas author B disagreed. So a scholarly information retriever is a whole lot of uh, it's a process that requires a lot of activities, and it requires critical mind, critical analysis, and all of that, because that is where we as researchers and uh, DH researchers can say, hey, this is where my study is quite kind of different from what people have done in the past. So it takes a lot of activities. And um, majorly, I'm talking as a librarian again, the major sources of uh, uh, sources where we get info, I mean, scholarly information retrieved can be either from print materials that has to do with books, journals, newspaper, monographs, mention them. Then we can also go to search engines, which we all know Google is one of the most popular search engines that, uh, that we explore. Then we have libraries subscribing to full text databases whereby we mentioned stuff like ProQuest, EBSCOs, and all that, which is like a, a, a collection of different articles in digital format. And, uh, but nevertheless, from what we have seen, the open AI, especially the arrival of chat GPT, has actually changed many things in scholarly landscape. And we see 
some of the examples that our keynote speaker gave this morning and the contributions that we've got from people thereafter. So chat GPT has brought another dimension to this. And uh, where does it lead us, especially using the lens of scholarly information retriever? And uh, OK, I'm not going to let me skip all these. And uh, OK, and uh, on this uh, page now, I have the comparative analysis of what we have between search engine, especially Google and chat GPT, then we found out that the purpose, the input, the output, the scope, the training model, the strength and limitations are quite different. So it depends on what we're looking for. And we've got to take notice of this as um, digital humanities uh, researchers. And of course, there are many benefits of uh, using chat GPT. And the good thing is it, it can serve as a as an, it, it helps in conceptualizing what we're trying to do. Sometimes we have a topic in our heart, but we'll be like, how do I start? What should be my introduction? How do I conceptualize my statement of problems? So most times when we use our prompts and all that, chat GPT can help because at that level, we might not really need too much of citations and all that. We can still use them now. But beyond that, there are still a lot of criticism against chat GPT. And the most common aspect of criticism of chat GPT has to do with citation, authorship, attribution, and all that. And we have a lot of things. Before now, we did some practical sessions whereby we prompted chat GPT to give us some stuff, and what it gave was quite different, wrong citations and all that. Then we've seen people spending a lot of time on their studies, on their research, because of wrong citations. And when you do that, you submit your articles to journals. They'll be like, hey, there are plagiarism issues here and there. Of course, as I conclude now, there are paid version of chat GPT that tries to you know, give credit and sources to citations. But again, that still brings us to another issues regarding open access advocacy, especially for researchers from the global south. Because it's not everybody that will be able to, you know, kind of pay for such subscription on a monthly basis and therefore that creates a digital divide, which we are trying to bridge. So how do we go? What should we do from there? Despite the criticism, we, we know that there are advantages and benefits of chat GPT. And uh, the way forward, as I conclude now, is that uh, chat GPT is often necessary to carefully design experiment is very good in evaluating models response critically and it's uh, also good for evaluating some data set and or human reviewers also beyond emotional intelligence there is a need to develop critical digital literacy and that's one thing uh, that i am proposing now and i have a model in that probably when i'm making my poster presentation in the afternoon i have something i am designing a research agenda you know, for that purpose. And I invite all of you to come to my stand. Critical digital literacy is very key because even at that, we found out that chat GPT gives wrong responses. And because it did not really give alternatives for you to kind of, unlike Google, Google will give you number of things, then you make your choice. So critical digital literacy is key. And also in making use of Chat GPT, we should be careful of digital copyrights and intellectual property rights issues. But as it is, innovation will be on the rise. And DH researchers need to continually update their research and digital skills to remain relevant in the changing world. Thank you very much. Thank you. I am looking for my thank you. <laughs> OK, thank you for listening. <laughs>